Hello chemistry students, Mr. Parker coming at you and in this screencast session we're going to take a look at significant digits and how, it apply, how they apply to chemistry um, and how to go about counting how many digits are, are significant within a problem um, for labs or tasks or quizzes like that. Um, we're going to go through a bunch of different rules so I would definitely have some paper out, jot them down um, so you have them. I would also probably include some of the examples so you have some of the examples. Okay. So rule number one, all non-zero digits are significant. So anything that's not a zero is going to be a significant figure or digit. As you can see here, you have 1.22, three digits. You have four digits, one digit, and then two digits. Okay, pretty straightforward. Again, if it's not a zero, it's a significant figure. Okay, rule number two and three, we have grouped here on the same slide. Zeros between non-zero digits are significant. So if you look here, okay, the two and the five, I kind of refer to as like the bookends, all right? Um, the zeros are in between, so those count as a significant digit. Um, here you have, and then also you have a group of zeros that are bookend between two, uh, between non-zero numbers. All right, so we're going to have you, you take a minute and kind of figure out what your answer is. On my next slide, I'll go ahead and give them to you for sure. But uh, rule number three, all zeros to the left of the first non-zero digit are not significant. Okay, um, so looking here, okay, you can see all these numbers here are going to be not, are not significant digits. Okay, so looking at the answers to these, all right, make sure you got the right answer. Okay, so our first set, we have four digits, three and seven because the zeros do count because you have them bookend by non-zero digits. All right, and then we are going to look here. Okay, you can see anything to the left of these numbers are going to be not significant. So, giving you the answer to those, you can see here we have one significant digits and three significant digits. And you can kind of see the color coding um, kind of leading you in the right direction to come up with the answers. All right, um, moving to the next couple rules here. Rule number four, zeros to the right of the last non-zero digit, what we refer to as trailing zeros, are significant if the decimal point is shown. Okay, so these are what we refer to as trailing zeros. Okay, and as long as the decimal points here that you see, as long as the decimal points are shown up at these particular examples on top here, those are all going to be significant digits. Okay, so take a minute and see if you can figure out what these are. They're written a little bit differently. Okay, um, and see if you can come up with the number of significant digits for those. Okay, so now in this case, a little bit different. We have a decimal, as it says up here, zeros to the right okay, of the last non-zero digit, our trailing zeros, and they become significant when we add that decimal point. Now notice these are to the left of the, num the number, the non-zero number, so those will not be significant. So just the ones in green here are going to be significant digits for those two examples. All right, now these all zeros are significant in all the different examples that you see up here. Okay, we'll have a little bit more practice with these. I'm going to give you a few different practice problems. Okay, rule number five, zeros to the right of the last non-zero digits. Okay, the trailing zeros are not significant if there's an understood decimal point. So like this, 600, okay, it's understood there's a decimal there. Understood there's a decimal here and then also here. Okay, so in the color coding, you can tell pretty easily what um, significant is going to be your green and non-significant are going to be your red um, numbers. So take a second here and see if you can figure out the bottom ones, okay, that we have. Which ones, you know, you have to figure out which ones are significant and which ones aren't because these are kind of all written a little bit differently. All right. So looking at these, up top we already kind of went through. They're a little bit easier. On the bottom here we have these are all significant due to the fact that the decimal points are in place. Okay. These are not significant. Okay. And then we have here we have the understood zero. Uh, sorry, understood decimal point, so those three zeros will not be significant. So we only have two digits that are significant in this particular example. Okay, and the last one deals with scientific notation. Scientific notation is where we have a certain decimal point or certain decimal play, uh, numbers, and then we multiply it by 10 that will allow us to re, uh, move the decimal. Okay, if it's in positive, we'll be moving the decimal to the right. If the, uh, the, um, the exponent here is going to be negative, we'd be moving the decimal to the left, okay? 
Um, but when we're talking about significant digits, we don't need to really do any moving of the de uh, decimal point. We just need, uh, it's pretty straightforward. Scientific notation, the exponent part of the number is not significant. So this stuff's not significant when we're talking about an answer. Okay. So when we look at our answers to these, okay, three significant digits, here you have four, here you have up a, to a total of four, and here you only have four because the rule applies, the previous rules still apply to the um, exponent numbers here that we're looking at, but these do not count in our answer. Okay, so, but we are still looking at the numbers here and our previous rules all apply to this particular, uh, all our examples that we've gone through. Okay, so what I'd like you to do, maybe you want to hit pause on this recording real fast, and in your um, notes, go ahead and answer these questions, okay? Um, again, they're all different types of examples of what we have done, um, you know, throughout the different, throughout the different six rules that we looked at, okay? So go ahead and pause it, okay? And welcome back, and hopefully you have um, checked your answers now. And everything in green are significant digits, and everyone in red are your non-significant digits, okay? So again, you can see these because of the decimal points, okay? Here you have um, the decimal points already here, so you, those are all significant digits, okay? And then remember looking at the zeros, why we only have two, all right? So again, we're going to do a lot of practice with these for, that, uh, for a couple of days in class to get some more practice and understanding and test the knowledge and the rules that we have, okay? All right, so, um, when, we're, when we're calculating significant digits, okay, for addition or subtraction, you answer, your answer is always rounded to the lowest number of decimal places in the data, okay? Usually what we're looking at is going to probably be the, the two decimal places, okay? But, um, you know, if, you, if you're adding two numbers, okay, you're going to always go with the least amount of, of decimal places when we're going to, coming up with our answer. Okay, so for this particular example, okay, Take a second and do the problem, add these together, all right, and because we're looking at the least amount of decimal places, in this particular case, we're going to be taking a look at how many, uh, two decimal, or two numbers after the decimal place, after you do addition, you're going to round those up. All right, so we have four decimal places, two decimal places, you round your, to, to the two decimal places, you do your math work, okay, Here's the answer that you get, okay, when we round it, okay, we'd be rounding down to the th point three nine. Um, it's always two decimal places after. Okay, so they're not really so much significant digits, but it just kind of gives, so everyone kind of is on the same page when we're doing rounding, when we're talking about addition um, problems. The same rules apply for subtraction. All right, now multiplication or division. The answer is rounded to the lowest number of significant digits. Okay, so before it was with addition and subtraction, it's just the, how many, the smallest amount of decimal, numbers after the decimal place. In multiplication, we're talking about the lowest number of significant digits in the data. All right, so for example, um, we're looking up here, we're, we're adding these three, or we're multiplying these three numbers. Okay, 12.32, 4.2958, and 0.012. So when, you, when we look at this, okay, this number up here, we have four significant digits. Up here, we have five significant digits, and here we only have two significant digits. Okay, so when we round our answer and we do our multiplication, we're only gonna our answer is gonna be left only with two significant digits because our lowest number of significant digits was this um, number up top here. And the rules are the same for division. Okay, so we go with the lowest amount of significant digits. To kind of go through quick summary, okay, these are the quick summary of the rules with a quick example um, that I definitely run through for yourself. Um, you know, maybe you put these all into your notes. You could always, uh, you know, have these so we can um, keep practicing with them and make sure you get a little bit more confident in how to figure out how many digits they are. Okay, so that's the first three, three rules, and then the last three rules here will also help you out in coming up with. Um, how to come up with the significant digits, and then we had talked about adding, subtracting them, and also um, multiplying, dividing. Okay, again, this is screencast session on significant figures, and we'll do more practice in class.